I built my first potting bench for my daughter over three years ago. And since then, I have sold over $100,000 in this bench. And I want to share with you. So let's get started. My wife found this potting bench on Pinterest. She asked if I could build it. And that's when it all started. Me and my son built this potting bench designed by Chip Wade. I'll leave the link in the description below with full plans. I've made several changes to the bench over the years. Some small, some big, different sink options and different widths. I even added a canopy. Follow along on this build and you can build it exactly how I'm building it. Or you can build it how Chip built it. Either way, you're going to have a great potting bench. I'm ripping my 1x4s down out of 1x8s. I do this because it's better quality material than buying 1x4s that are all bent up and bow wee boot. Once you get all of your square cuts cut, let's move on to the specialty cuts. I cut the sink supports 13 inches long point to long point. This works out best for the sink I'm using. This dowel holder is made from a 4x4 ripped in half and 2 and 3 quarter inches tall to the long point. You're going to cut two pieces. One's going to have a 15 degree angle and the other one's going to have a 25 degree angle. The 25 degree angle will be your top dowel holder with the short pieces. I cut mine to 17 and a half inches. Let's move on to the 4x4 stock. Here you're going to cut your legs. I cut my legs, four legs at 29 and a half inches and the two back supports at 36 inches. Let's cut the spacer for the back support piece. The spacer is going to be an inch and seven eighths thick two and seven eighths inch wide and six inches long. One inch chamfer on the back support pieces. Cutting your dowels, I cut my dowels two at 15, two at 12, two at six, and two at four. I'm taking the round edge off. This is gonna be for the two by two decorator pieces. In all of my benches, I try to incorporate one knot hole at least. As long as it could be stable, you're getting a hole. It's part of the look. Cut them to length, and you should have a pile of lumber that looks just like this. The moisture of the redwood, the stain that stains the wood. So we'll try the 80 grit, usually gets most of that out. 80, 100 grit, whatever works. I'm using a half inch roundover bit on all the top slats, the bottom shelf slats, and the two slats that go on the very top of the shelves. One inch chamfer on the corbels. You'll notice that one inch is a theme on this bench. Cut them out, clean them up, and you're good to go. Grab yourself a spade bit or a Forstner bit. They both work just fine. Mark center of your bit. The bottom of your bit should be about a quarter inch away from the bottom of the dowel holder. I drill these holes one inch deep. make these relief cuts will make it easier putting this dowel into the dowel holder. A light sanding with 150 grit. Try not to get these dowel holders mixed up because it is way too much work to have to redo it. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Here's a jig I made for the top bench and the bottom of the bench. This is a jig to line up your pocket hole screws so you could screw the pocket hole screws into the slats okay so the top jig is a 21 inch board pull from left to right three and five eighths seven and three eighths eleven and eighth fourteen and seven eighths seventeen and three quarters and the same thing for the bottom pull from left to right on your 15 inch board inch and five eighths four and a half seven and three quarters and eleven and a half but these numbers are going to land right in the middle of your slats and it's going to work out perfect. All you have to do is transfer your jig marks onto your pieces like this. Once you've finished drilling out all your pocket holes and the short pieces, move on to the long pieces. I space these out about 10 inches apart.
I added an additional 21 inch board. The measurement you want where the sink is, inside dimensions, 23 and a quarter inch will work just great. Cross tape for square. Do a test fit, make sure everything is lined up and centered. The sink size determines where you're going to put the sink, obviously, but I'll give you the magic number for my sink and where it's centered and located in the top of the bench. So it won't give you a fit. Glue it up and nail it in. Cut a spacer block so you can get even reveals all around your legs. I'm attaching a 27 inch 2x4 redwood with 3.5 inch deck screws. I'm attaching the casters with two 3 inch lag screws, 3 8 going into the front post there, and also with two 5 16 carriage bolts, 2 inches long. Arrange your bottom boards. Lay some glue down, and then put in your board one at a time. Line your boards up on one end. Take your framing square. I always work off the right side of the bench with the framing square, and then nail it off. That board in the middle is bowed a little bit too much, so I'm replacing it right now. Usually I could get that bow out of it if it's not too bad, with just a plastic putty knife, which you'll see me using right here. Secure your bottom slats with your pocket screws. Don't forget about the front and back sides. By adding this 2x4 block, it adds strength to the bottom bench where it could hold several hundred pounds. Pull four and a half inches from the bottom of the post and mark that. This is going to be the bottom of the spacer block. Pre-drill a hole in each corner to attach this spacer block. Measure from the top of that 45 and mark four inches and six inches and drill your holes. Now it's time to attach the back post. This could be a little bit tricky. Take a scrap board the same thickness as your top slats and lay it on the bench right there. So you can put your 18 inch block on top of it. Make it flush and you know you're good on both sides. Okay, get your one inch reveal, pull out your square, and line up your 4x4 on the inside edge. And then right here, you're going to pull over from the back of the board the thickness of your 4x4, which is normally 3 and a half, 3 and 3 eighths, whatever it is. Take a similar block as the post and scribe in a corner so you have a nice reference.
I don't normally cut this upside down, but I didn't have a good down cut bit. So sometimes you just have to do what you have to do with the tools you have. And that's what I'm doing to avoid tear out. We need to remove the material from this 4x4 where the water spigot goes and we're going to leave one inch all the way around. Twelve and a half inches is your magic number from inside that post to dead center of the sink. Mark and drill your hole with the one inch bit or inch and an eighth bit I'm using as close as you can inside that rail. Here's how we put together the plumbing that goes inside the block where the sink is. We're going to drill a hole here. Bigot's going to go here. This is going to be wrapped with Teflon tape. It's going to go in here and that's going to go in there. And then this little inch and a half piece is going to go in here. The 90 is going to go oops, down with the 12 inch piece here. And I, I'm taking off the writing with paint thinner or paint or solvent, whatever, mineral spirits, whatever you have. I'll just wipe it off with a rag. A garden hose adapter. This will slip on right here and that'll go hook up to your garden hose. That's how it goes together. I'm going to put it together and I'll show you. When you're drawing in your outer line here, make sure it stays a half inch away from the water spigot post. One half inch. Sketch a line inside the outer line about a quarter inch and this is your cut line.
So now it's time to put on the one by six shelf, the middle shelf that goes here, right here. It's gonna go, we're gonna cut it out around this four by four. It's gonna go on top of this little one, around the middle one, on top of this one, and then cut out on the side. So one, two, three cutouts. And this is definitely the most difficult part of this bench, but it's only difficult if you don't take your time. So I'll show you exactly how I do it. I'm gonna pull out everything I've learned in the last three and a half years on cutting this. So first thing you're gonna do is take this board and put it on top. And then make sure you get your reveals the same on each side, which is one inch. If it's slightly over or slightly under, just make it even. And it's even on the back. You notice these are set in. They're only set in because of the plumbing. It's the only way I can make it work. I just offset the same one over here exactly. And they're set in about three eighths of an inch right here. All right, so once you have your board up here, nice and flat, both reveals are the same. We need to scribe it. Hold it firmly down without moving it and just scribe it. There's one, two, and the last one. This cedar's rough on, it's rough on one side. That's seven eighths inch thick. All right, so now we have it drawn down. Let's see if we can see that. So now you have all three of your scribes. I'll show you how I cut them out. On all three of these cuts, you have to stay inside the pencil line. You can cut the pencil line, you're gonna have a loose fit, guaranteed. Just make half the turn, unless you're super good, I'm not. I'm not that good. And come back over here. There's one. And since we're cutting on the rough side, those teeth are pulling up, but it's smooth on the right side. So that's good. This one is the most important because you have two sides to cut. If I were to cut this line on both sides, I might as well just throw this thing away. So that's what I'm trying not to do inside the line. This corner is almost square. I'm gonna round it over just a little bit. This one is more, it's more rounded. So right now, let me show you. It looks a little rough, because it is. But I'd rather have more material than not enough. So this is what I do right now. Looking for a flat cut. Let's see how that flat, this one's a, ooh, hello. This one's a little canted, a little higher on this side. See a little piece in there from the jigsaw? Just take that round file. Work it. If you pull it down towards the bottom, if it splinters, it'll splinter here instead of on the top. It's a horrible sound, isn't it? Okay, we have some movement. It went down here. It's still tight. It's bowed here, but it it's going down. We're going in the right direction. And in the middle, it's still tight over here. So I just scribbled a line there, a bunch of stuff there. So I got to work on that. It's gone down over here. So it looks a little tight right in there. So I put some pencil lines right there to work on. So we have movement slowly, but it's moving in the right direction. If you clear the bottom out, it's not that severe. Just file it on an angle like that. It'll it'll give it more clearance. You don't have to worry about the bottom hitting. You just have to worry about getting that top nice and tight. All right. I've been working on this for about an hour. And now, when you get it right, you'll know. Let's check a look. 
see it'll, it'll want to slide down. You want it tight, but you don't want to force it and too much, a little bit. We're going to stop right above the faucet, pull it tight, see what we got. Let me bring you over here and I'm going to show you what it looks like right now. Here's the thing, this outdoor piece of furniture and you round over the edge a little bit, it gives a nice shadow line. So that looks pretty good right there. Let's look at the middle. The middle will give you the fits. The middle is where you'll lose it too. Okay, so we're looking all right. It's tight over here. Looks pretty good. It looks real good actually. If you get it like that on your first time, pat yourself on the back, I'll tell you that right now. Right now, we're gonna put a square on here, find center, and we're gonna make a little cutout right here so you could turn the knob. Get your U-band can and pull in an inch and a quarter. You could round over the one by sixes now or you could do it prior, doesn't really matter. It might be easier to do it when it's not on the bench, but either way, I only round over one edge of each one by six. Take this time to touch up the post. You're gonna pull over from the back of the board one inch and mark it. This is your connectors with the pocket screw to each post. All right, so let's put the shelf on permanently. Since we know it fits, I start lower. There's no reason to scratch it up again. Pound it down on the two short post gives you a nice feel that it's set. So get them where get them where they're all even. Just keep them kind of square. All right. We want to check for a square this way. Once you're pleased with that. Now it's time, I'm gonna tighten these up a little bit. And now it's time to put the pocket screws in. So I always start off with the middle. I'm using this piece of plywood to put against the post. So if the drill accidentally slips off like it has in the past, it doesn't poke a hole right in the post, your finished product. With the corbels, look at your grain pattern and see what you like. These two are the same, this one's different, so the different one in the middle. Let me show you how we're gonna attach these. Mark center line, let's take a regular clamp because the, the Craig clamp won't work right here. And I just clamp that down and line it up. And then I take it like this and I put it in the vise. And we're just gonna drill out the one hole. It'll go just like that. It'll be glue and a pocket screw and some brad nails. And that's it. Do two more. A little glue on the corbel. Not too much. It'll stick nicely like that. If you put too much, it'll run down the post. Have a clamp ready. I clamp it about a half, leave about a half inch there or a little bit more. Just check it. Tighten that up a little bit. Okay, now we're good. We're good right there. Come back and just look at it from a distance, the front of the bench. Try to put these nails as even as I can. Center and right, left. Now we'll put one screw. Try to keep it on separate posts so you don't see it in the scene. So get your one inch reveal. Nice. Inch and a quarter. Well, the nails don't go through here because they will. Okay, this is how I put in the two by two, the decorator pieces. Just like this. First, pick the side that you want facing out. On these, I leave these square. I break the edges, that's it. I like them, I like the squared look. I've rounded them over before, I don't like that look. So I just reach in here. I just look where it peaks, right there. 
And the same thing down here, right where I think it's going to meet, right there. And then I just scribe it. I bring it back. See how it looks. Then I set it in the bottom angle over here. Or whichever one fits. This one looks like it's fitting nicely right here. You can see that. It actually fits right there. So I'll bring it in just a little bit. And then now I'm going to scribe this one up here. It looks like it's a little bit different than it was before. So I'll cut this line and see where we're at. Okay, I cut that line just to shave that up. Just a little bit right there. It's nice and tight there and nice and tight there. So now do the other three. Okay, so once you get your decorator brace pieces in, how you like them, you're gonna attach them with pocket screws. I figured this out, it works best. I used to use nails and it's horrible. So just make a tick mark right here. Just a, just a tick mark on the short side right here on all of them. I have this set at seven eighths of an inch. That tick mark, go in about a quarter inch, quarter to three eighths. You're gonna catch it at an angle, but you're gonna miss the edge just barely. And I just put it against this wall right here and make sure I'm drilling in the right hole here. That's how they're gonna go in. Let me show you. I marked all of the ends. So now I could give them their final sanding before we install them. So I centered on this four by four, so it's gonna be offset a little bit on the little one. This one's gonna get the two inch, two and a half inch screw. Till it just, till it bites. On the bottom slats, measure in two inches from the edge and then center it. And this is where we're gonna drill three holes. Inch and five eighths, this Forstner bit. Now for the top holes, remember the bottom, you measured over two inches, but we have a one inch overhang on the top. So we're gonna measure over three inches and center. Three inches, center. need to get a dent out of a brand new project all you need is a wet paper towel and a hot iron household iron that's it you know that nice all gone one final pass with the sander at 150 grit my grandson stopped by to help out so take your rake. You don't have to cut it like this. It's just how I do it. You can cut it by hand. I just leave about an inch right here. All right, so the rake is just centered on here. So I just pulled from here, three quarters of an inch gap. It has a bow. And then I just space these evenly. Put the two bottom in first, and then you can make slight adjustments. And once you add the third, and the third locks it down, and the fourth, secures it we're going to pre-drill two holes right here for the two screws i measured over an inch and a quarter once you clamp it on i just measure here i have six and five eighths on both sides here i have about a half inch on each side and this board is different than the plans so i changed that as well it's about a half inch longer this rake goes right underneath here, not on the outside, on the way I changed it. Put one screw in. Make sure it stays tight there. My camera got stuck in slow motion. So center the dowel holders. And the bottom dowel holder, the top of it is even with the bottom slats there.
I used the scraps from the potting bench to build this little planter box for my daughter to hold her seedlings and every potting bench since then has gotten the same planter box.